Hey guys and welcome back. Well, before we jump into today's video, I want to do a shout out to the gang at flipnormals.com. I had the honor to do a complete substance painter tutorial series for them and they recently put that online. Okay, so if you want to check that out, I'll put a link below in the description. Okay, so uh, what about today's video? Well, we're going to do a lot of stuff. We're going to do some modeling in Maya. We're going to create end cloth material. We're going to color mask all of that. We're going to export it. We're going to create some custom textures in bitmap to material. And we're going to bring all of that into Substance Painter and uh, texture the object and render it out. OK, so here we go. All right, guys, let's get started. So we're in uh, Maya 2018 and I loaded up a model of a table that I did a while back. And as you can see, nothing fancy, just a round table. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a tablecloth for this guy. All right. So this is one object, as you can see. It's nice and high poly, so it's a clean detail. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in to uh, create. We're going to go to Polygon Primitives and select a plane. There we go. We're going to move that up, not too high, something like so. And then we're going to hit R to scale that up. All right. Now, from our top view, we can see how big it is and whether we want to go bigger or not. But this is basically okay. It's sticking out about one unit at each uh, end here, which is fine, I guess. And let's have a look. Yeah, looks fine. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that it has enough subdivision level that once it's on the table, it looks like actual fabric and not something that is really clunky. All right. So we're going to hit uh, Control A to open up the attribute editor. We're going to go into Polyplane 1. And let's set this to a nice high level. Let's do 40 by 40 subdivisions. And there you go. All right. So it's time to turn this thing into a tablecloth. But before we do that, let's make sure it's UV'd. So we're going to go to uh, our modeling menu. We're going to go to UV and UV editor. And because this is a perfect square, you can see that it's already UV'd. OK, so we're all set. Now, let's jump into our FX menu. There we go. We have our tablecloth selected. We're going to go to end cloth and create end cloth. And you can see that the nucleus and so forth has been created. So this is a successful end cloth creation. All right, so one more thing we need to do. Once this uh, thing starts to act as a end cloth object, we need to tell the system that there's a table underneath and it should interact, okay? So we're gonna select our end cloth. We're gonna shift select our table. We're gonna go back to the end cloth menu and we're gonna click on create passive collider. There we go. Right, so finally, let's look at our frames in our animation slider. It's at 500 frames right now. That should be enough. And we're simply going to hit play and see what happens. Here we go. It's uh, responding nicely. And I'll just wait until I have a good pose like this. And I'm just simply going to click on stop. And this would be our tablecloth. All right, I can live with that. Looks good. So in order to make sure that it stays this way, I'm going to go and select it and I'm going to go to edit, delete by type and history, All right? So now if I hit play, nothing happens. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I'm not happy with how smooth this is just yet. So I'm going to go up to, uh, where is it? Modeling menu, we're going to go to mesh, we're going to go to smooth. And let's set this to subdivision level two, which will give us something like this. All right. Okay, so uh, at some point we want to texture this in Substance Painter. So I need to create a color ID mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my table right here, right click assign new material. Let's do a regular Lambert and we'll just throw on something. Okay, it doesn't really matter what, it's a placeholder. And then we'll take our cloth Right click assign new material, we'll do the same and we'll pick a different color. Okay, so now that we have that done, we can combine these two into one object. So we're going to go to mesh and combine. And once more, we'll do edit, delete by type history, and we'll do modify freeze transformations. Okay, 
So now what we can do is we can take this entire thing and export it. So we're gonna go to file, we're gonna go to export selection, hit the option box, go to OBJ, make sure it's an OBJ, export selection. This is gonna ask me what I wanna call it. Let's call this round table OBJ. And I'm gonna export it as an OBJ on my desktop. And there we go, all right? Okay, so now let's find a suitable texture. And for that, we're gonna to go to uh, textures.com. Hang on. All right, well, we're at textures.com, as you can see, uh, formerly known as cgtextures.com. I'm pretty sure you heard of it. There we go. And what I want is fabric with the C. Yeah, there we go. And we have a whole bunch. Okay, so let's see what we want. This is our main category right here. Uh, let's see, pattern fabric, plain fabric. We didn't have to go too fancy with that. Let's do, I don't know. I'm certainly not a fabric expert, but let's take this blue right here. Okay, so I want to uh, download this. I'm logged in so I can pay for this. Uh, actually, this one is free. I'll do this one. Uh, yeah, that's the one we want. Medium size. Click on that and we're downloading it. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do next is we are gonna take this uh, plain fabric image and we're gonna create a bunch of additional images. So we're gonna create a normal map, a curvature map, um, I mean occlusion map and so forth. Now, um, I don't know what um, software you have, but you can do this in a bunch of different um, software packages. You can create um, specular maps, I mean occlusion maps. You can do all of that in Maya. You can do it in Photoshop if you've got the right plugins. I'm gonna use a, a different program for that. So let's uh, check that out. All right, well, we are in a program called Bit, uh, Bitmap to Material, okay? Now, this program is by the makers of Substance Painter. It's a very, very cool. Uh, what it does is you basically drop in a flat image and it creates all sorts of additional maps for you. So um, I have uh, the image that I downloaded on my other screen right here. So let me just uh, pull that up, hang on. Yep, and let's just simply drag that in. And I'm just gonna drop that in that area up here, okay? Now once I do that, it's asking me what I want. Do I wanna use it as a normal? I'm just gonna go with main input. And as I do that, you can see that it's been applied to my cube right here. And if you go in close, you can see that it actually already created height information and so forth, all right? So now that we have that, we have all sorts of sliders that we can play with on the right, but this tutorial is not about this software, so we're just gonna keep it basic, all right? So I'm gonna go to the outputs, and let's see, what do I want? I want a base color, obviously, roughness map. I don't want a metallic map, so I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, I don't need to diffuse because I have my base color, we can go with the uh, specularity, normal map, height map, I mean occlusion. I want a curvature map. Uh, let's see, detail normal. Uh, we don't need emissive and potentially we need opacity. So I got all of these selected and basically all I need to do is just go up to export as bitmap. Now I get that same overview again. It's asking me where I wanna save it. I wanna save it on my desktop. I want to save it out as JPEG images. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about all that stuff. Uh, let's see. And I'm just gonna simply hit export. And boom, there you go. All of these files have been created and exported. I'm not necessarily gonna use all of them, but just so you know how that works, all right? So let's uh, close that up. And now it's time to jump into Substance Painter. Here we go. Okay guys, we're in uh, Substance Painter 2.61 to be exact, and uh, let's open up a new file. So we're gonna get a file, new, and I'm gonna leave my template at PBR got a metal rough. And for my mesh, I'm gonna go in and select my round table OBJ, all right? Now let's see what else. I'm gonna set my map size to uh, 2K, and leave everything else alone, and I'm just gonna hit okay. We'll give that a sec, and there you go. Now, it brought in the table and the uh, tablecloth, and because I created a color ID uh, in uh, Maya, 
I now have two texture sets. I have one for the table and one for the cloth. Now the cloth is the one that I want to work on, so I'm gonna select that and we're gonna go and bake our initial textures, right? So I'm gonna hit Bake Textures. I'm gonna set this to 2K size and I'm gonna turn off ID and for the rest, I'm basically gonna bake everything. So I'm just gonna click on Bake All Texture Sets. We'll give that a sec. And it's starting to bake in information. You can see I'm in occlusion, curvature map, position map, thickness. And it's uh, thinking about it. Shouldn't be that tough. Nothing too fancy going on there, so. All right, well, bakes are finished. You can see that the uh, the bakes are down here, which is perfect. And just to be sure, I'm gonna to go to view and reset user interface. So we're all on the same page here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and we're gonna create a new fill layer, okay? Like I said, make sure you're on your tablecloth and we are, we created a new fill layer. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring in some textures, okay? So I'm gonna go down to my texture section. Uh, let's see, where is it? it? Oh, there it is, sorry. Okay, so we have that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to my other screen and I'm gonna select all the texture maps that we just created and exported. And I'm basically just gonna drag them in, okay? So I'm gonna drag them in and I'm gonna drop them in this area right here, boom. Now, once I do that, I get a question, okay, what do I want to use this as, okay? So instead of undefined, I want to use this as a texture. I can also import HDRI images, for example, and use it as an environment, or I can even use uh, LUTs, you know, lookup tables to, uh, you know, for color correction and so forth. But I'm gonna select all of these as textures. Okay, so import uh, resources for the current session. And I'm gonna click on import, and there you go. Here are our files. Now, we created a new fill layer, so we have a couple of options here that we can populate. So for example, here is my uh, diffuse or my base color. I'm gonna left click and drag, and I'm gonna drop that onto the base color, not on that white bar right there, onto the tab where it says base color. And I'm just gonna let that go. And as you can see, as I do that, it is applied. Okay, what else? Let's see, we have a normal. Well, we got a normal right here, and we have a normal right here. Now this is a detailed normal, so let's bring that in and drag that in right there. And as we do that, you can see you get a very nice and fine structure, if you will. Now we don't have any metallic, we do have a roughness, so let's see which one that is. There you go. All right, sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna bring that in and we're gonna drop that onto our roughness tab. And as you can see, a pretty realistic setup there. So just to show you what this looks like uh, when we render this out, let's just go in I'll actually do a quick texture on the table, just for the heck of it, okay? I don't even think that that, that table is UV'd actually. Okay, so that's our cloth here. Uh, a couple of things I wanna do. I want to go in and, I'll just uh, pause this for a minute. Let's go in and, okay. I want to do a clear color as a background. Let's see what we got. This looks all good. That's obviously because I paused that, there we go. So if we go into Dome, I want to change that color to maybe something that's a bit darker. Yeah, that works. Okay. So we're gonna bump up the samples. And 
and I'm not going to spend too much time on this, all right? So let's have this render out. I'll just give it a sec, okay? All right, the render is done. Uh, we are going to uh, save the render, and I'll call this uh, render the substance painter. I'll save that on my desktop. And we'll just quickly open that up in uh, Photoshop and tweak it a little bit, okay? Right, guys, there you have it. Well, it's, uh, you know, um, it turned out okay. Uh, obviously, you need to spend a lot more time on this to uh, make it look exactly right. But this is the, the basic process, okay? So, uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.